In this video, we review Azure availability sets and availability zones. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Freltos. If you've deployed a VM in Azure, you may have noticed the options of using an availability set or an availability zone. In this video, we review those options and how to use them for high availability. Before that, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Click the bell icon for notifications of new content and check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365 with Intune Management, Hybrid Identities with Windows AD and Enter ID, and my latest course, A Beginner's Guide to the AZ900, available at udemy.com. Links are below. And thank you, channel members. Your support is appreciated. Back to it, and we'll start with the first availability option, Availability Sets. In order to understand availability sets, we first have to review fault domains and update domains in Azure. Let's start by considering an Azure region. An Azure region is a collection of multiple well-connected data centers. They're located close in a single geography, so latency between them is low, but they're far enough apart to provide reliability, such as separate power sources. Let's talk about fault and update domains next. And before we do, please keep in mind that the following information is conceptual and may not be the actual way Microsoft configures Azure data centers, but the information still applies from a logical standpoint. Within a data center, there are multiple server racks. Imagine each server rack has its own power connection, network switch, and physical servers. If any one of these components fails, the entire rack fails. This is a fault domain. Fault domains share a common power source and network connection. Microsoft has to maintain the Azure infrastructure. Sometimes that includes updates that disrupt services running in that infrastructure. Microsoft won't update all of the infrastructure in the data center at the same time. They deploy updates to groups of resources one at a time. Those groups are called update domains. What does this have to do with availability sets? Everything. Availability sets distribute resources across multiple fault and update domains. For example, let's say we deploy three servers in a high availability cluster. Without availability sets, it's possible that two of those nodes could end up on the same fault domain or update domain. In this configuration, if there's an update or a failure, two of the three nodes would be offline. This is the situation that availability sets prevents. Placing VMs in an availability set will keep the VMs in different fault and update domains. We can define up to three fault domains in an availability set and up to 20 update domains. If we deploy more VMs than domains, the domains will have multiple VMs. For example, if we create an availability set with 10 update domains and deploy 11 servers in the set, one update domain will have two servers. If using managed disks for a VM, and by now most of us are, we can align the disk fault domain so all managed disks attached to a VM are in the same fault domain. VMs are added to an availability set when they're created. An existing VM can't easily be added or moved to a new availability set. The process involves removing the old VM and creating a new VM in the availability set with the old VM's disks. We can create an availability set by going to the Azure portal and searching for availability sets. From there, add a new availability set. Select the subscription and the resource group. We can use the same resource group for all servers in the availability set. Give it a name and select the region. That has to be the same region as the servers we're adding to it. Select the number of fault domains and update domains. We'll use three and 10 for this example. If using manage disks, select yes to align the disks to the VM in the availability set. Once that's set, go to advanced. We don't need to add a proximity placement group. Add tags as needed, then review and create. If that all looks good, we'll create. I'll pause here while that finishes. Our availability set has been created. Let's use it to create a new VM. From the new VM creation page under availability options, we can select availability sets. From here, we can select the availability set we just created or add a new one. The rest of the settings are the same for deploying any VM. The next high availability option for deploying VMs is using availability zones. We already reviewed how Azure regions have many data centers. Availability zones are collections of data centers within a region. Not all regions support availability zones. However, if they do, there are three zones, each with independent power cooling and networking infrastructure. They're typically separated by several kilometers, 
but within 100 kilometers to support low latency connectivity between the zones. Speaking of network connectivity, there's no charge for data transferred between availability zones within a region. Microsoft still needs to update the infrastructure in a region, which could lead to outages in a zone. Microsoft deploys updates to a single availability zone at a time. This works similar to update domains in availability sets. If one zone is updated, the other two are still available. Many different Azure services support availability zones, not just Azure VMs. And there are two ways to use availability zones in a deployment, zone redundant deployments and zonal deployments. With zone redundant deployments, the resource is automatically deployed across availability zones. An Azure storage account, for example, has the zone redundant storage or ZRS option. We don't have to specify the zones when deploying ZRS storage. Copies of the data is automatically replicated as part of that service. With zonal deployments, we select the zone the resource is assigned to. An Azure VM that uses availability zones provides an option to select specific zones for the deployment. There's also an option currently in preview that lets Microsoft select the best fit for the zonal deployment. There's no redundancy with a single VM deployment, but if we deploy multiple VMs for a service, we can select different availability zones to support high availability. It's best to include availability zones when planning and use them from the start. It's possible to move a resource into a zone if needed. Each resource that supports availability zones has its own process to migrate the service. I'll leave a link to those below. An Azure VM, for example, can be migrated by redeploying a replacement VM in a zone, moving the VM to a zone by recreating the VM with the original VM's disks, or using the Azure Resource Mover. It's best to avoid migrating VMs by using availability zones from the start. Generally speaking, if the region supports availability zones, that's a better option over availability sets. Microsoft has an SLA of 99.99%, for two or more VMs deployed in an availability zone, compared to 99.95 for two or more VMs deployed to an availability set. Availability sets and zones alone will not prevent a single VM failure. We still need to plan for load balancing and high availability with a service. For example, if we deploy three web servers across three availability zones, and each one can handle 50% of the web traffic, we could sustain a single zone failure. However, if those same web servers are sized to handle one-third the load, a single zone failure could overload those servers and cause a total outage. The same is true for using availability sets. High availability must account for performance requirements if a node becomes unavailable. In addition, we need load balancing in place to direct traffic to the remaining nodes. Availability sets and zones are part of a high availability design. They don't provide high availability by themselves. That's an overview of Azure availability sets and availability zones. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.